This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, residents forced to evacuate their Dunedin homes on Thursday still don't know when they'll be allowed to return. A young Dunedin couple have spent the past two years transforming an eye-catching empty building into a brewery. And the Harris Mountains are set to be made more accessible to outdoor enthusiasts thanks to a proposed new ski touring route. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Sophie Morris. Residents forced to evacuate their Dunedin homes on Thursday still don't know when they'll be allowed to return. Four homes in St Clair remain off limits because the City Council considers them to be dangerous or at risk. Homes vacated due to the very real risk of a landslip. Following the recent heavy rains, this house on Allendale Road in Dunedin has dropped around half a metre, pulling away from sewer and stormwater piping. Because the house is a risk to three other homes below on Moto Street, residents of all four houses are unable to return while geotechnical engineers assess the slip. We're just concerned that the house on the, on the top will slide down and, and uh, yeah, will potentially wipe out these three houses below, so uh, people have to move out. While slips are common in this area and routinely repaired, this is the only recent one they've identified on the hillside. So at this stage we're not aware of other slips. I mean obviously those um, slips do occur around this area. It is, it is a very hilly area and um, work is done when they occur. Um, but at this stage we're not aware of anything else, certainly of this magnitude. And it could be some time before things get back to normal for the affected residents. So it's up to the engineers now. Uh, EQC are leading that work and hopefully they'll have some answers soon, but uh, it has been underpinned before that home, mm. uh, so it may uh, require um, a significant amount of work before it's stable. And how long that takes at uh, this time of year is, is very difficult to answer. Residents of the four homes were allowed back on Friday briefly to remove more of their possessions, but there's still no timeline for when they might be allowed to return home. In Dunedin, for the South Today. Balclutha residents were advised to shut their doors and windows against noxious smoke as the town's landfill went up in flames yesterday morning. A helicopter with a monsoon bucket was deployed to battle the blaze in a rubbish pile at Mount Kui landfill near the Kaitangata Highway on the outskirts of Balclutha. Crews from as far afield as Kaka Point and Waihola turned out to assist firefighters from Balclutha along with a command unit from Dunedin. Emergency services say there's no word on the cause of the blaze and the origin of landfill fires can be difficult to determine. It took several hours and significant volumes of water to bring the fire under control. The landfill was opened for business today. A young Dunedin couple have spent the past two years transforming an eye-catching empty building into a brewery. Since returning home from overseas, John O'Walker and his partner Emma Parsons have been tinkering away inside the old Blueskin Hotel in Evansdale, building their very own brewery. It's been a two-year labour of love for John O'Walker and his partner Emma Parsons, and now they've finally opened the doors to their new brewery inside the old Blueskin Hotel in Evansdale. Just the site sort of presented itself, and it just seemed like a really good opportunity and it was, uh, it was derelict so there was like plenty of things for us to put our fingerprint on. He says he kept working full time as a builder and spent most of his spare time assembling the brewery. Now the Ark Brewing Company is a custom made 200 litre brewing facility with a tap room and bar surrounded by handmade tables and stools. Yeah we're a bit naive I think, uh, retrospectively looking back because the scope of works that needed to be done were just far greater than we could ever imagine. Making the situation slightly busier was the birth of their son nine months ago. But Walker says their vision remains the same, with people able to walk in and experience the couple's own personal project. You, know, you can come here and, and get a beer and talk to me, I'll serve you it, and then we can discuss how it's all made. And just sort of, uh, it's just sort of like a window into our lives, I guess. If the venture's successful, there's room for the brewery to grow. There's also plans to turn other rooms in the building into an art gallery and event space. In Dunedin, the South today. 
Two people have been airlifted to hospital with serious injuries after a crash in central Otago overnight. Emergency services were called to Kenmuir Road near Bannockburn at around quarter to two in the morning after a van hit a tree. Police say two people were airlifted to Dunedin Hospital with serious injuries. One of the occupants was initially trapped in the vehicle. Another person was transported to Dunstan Hospital in Clyde with moderate injuries. The Harris Mountains are set to be made more accessible to outdoor enthusiasts thanks to a proposed new ski touring route. Skiers travelling the 60-kilometre wintertime traverse between Coronet Peak and Treble Cone ski fields will also be able to find shelter with the addition of five new alpine huts. Arrowtown adventurer Eric Bradshaw is currently constructing the huts, which he's designed using a plastic water tank for the outer shell. Creating a hut to provide shelter for skiers in the harsh alpine environment. This hut, made within a large plastic water tank, is set to provide skiers with a place to stay as they traverse the Harris Mountains. Called Turk Huts, Arrowtown man Eric Bradshaw plans to have five of them installed along the route between Coronet Peak and Treble Cone. Inside the Turk we've got a, a nice bench for cooking on. Um, there'll be a small seat just at that end of the bench as well. We've got opening windows so you can appreciate the view. Um, it's all insulated and the windows are well, the double glaze, they're actually plastic, but the double glaze. The proposed 60 kilometre cross country ski journey is expected to take most people three days to complete. A club is set to be formed for owning and managing the huts, with membership being necessary for overnight stays. Um, this is a bunk end, so there'll be two bunks running along here. Um, this is the central support, which basically fits here and supports the other side of two bunks which run across here. Three of his Turk huts are already in use in Antarctica, designed to withstand sub-zero temperatures. And the ceiling will be insulated and covered as well, so that's yet to do. Bradshaw's inviting people to view his hut and find out more about the proposed ski trail. In Arrowtown, for the South Today. Still to come on the South Today. We check out the action at a Nuomaru Christmas event and we see if Cantabrians have a sweet or sour reaction to lime scooters. Hi folks, it's me again. My friend Lindsay at Alec Campbell Menswear and all his team in the three stores, Mosgill, South Dunedin and Cromwell, wish you a Merry Christmas. It's a wee message from him. And from me, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. It's always really satisfying when a customer comes back after doing a purchase of outdoor furniture and knowing that we've got it done right. Merry Christmas. Need to rent an FPOS? Whether it's just a week or the whole season. Maybe a pop-up store, a concert or event. Anything's POS have equipment available to suit your needs. For retail and hospitality with local support. To rent, lease or buy, contact Anything's POS. It's that time of year. It's time to get into the garden and it's time to get your weed eater. Down here at the Power Garden Department at Anderson's Bay Road, this year it's all about the cordless weed eater. Come down and see us at Mighty 10 Mega and we'll help you get it done right. Spring is here and it's time to get in the garden. Ready Lawn will take care of your lawn needs making Lawn Care a snap. They will install the perfect lawn while you plant your favourite flowers and vegetables. Call Ready Lawn today so you can enjoy the coming season. Step into Op Shop on St Andrew and discover a place with plenty of bargains for yourself, your friends and the whole family. We have new items arriving every day. 
Visit us for a fabulous range of economy and upmarket clothing, accessories, books, shoes and more. Shop with us and support your community. Step into Ross Cafe, located at Ross Home in North East Valley. We have a great range of hot and cold food, friendly service and a warm atmosphere that you are sure to enjoy. We look forward to serving you soon at Ross Cafe. I just love coming to Alex Campbell's, that's my favourite shop. I always get good value here, and good boys really deserve good brands and good quality. Look at these teas, local beaches on some of them too. This is only for the good boys, the old boys, the young boys. What about some bright shorts for the boys? Excellent. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Welcome back. Tradies are again being told to remain vigilant and lock up their tools after another targeted theft in Dunedin at the weekend. About $1,000 worth of tools were stolen from a ute in Panmure Avenue on Saturday in Carlton Hill. Police say a blue and grey Subaru legacy was seen in the area at the time and they're urging anyone with information to come forward. Tools have been targeted across various Dunedin suburbs since August. The spate of thefts is being connected to what police say is a growing methamphetamine problem in the south. Christmas in the park became Christmas at the harbour in Oamaru yesterday after organisers House of Breakthrough Church relocated the event from its Takaro Park to the Oamaru Harbour area. As a result, about 2,000 people enjoyed the festive atmosphere in the form of music entertainment for children. It's the seventh year the free community event has been staged. Organisers hope to be able to hold it at the harbour again next year. There were long queues for the face painting and ball toss stalls, as well as for candy floss and sausages. House of Breakthrough Church pastor Damien Goodsir says the church loves hosting the free community event. It appears Christchurch people are big fans of lime scooters. Recent figures reveal 400 share scheme e-scooters scattered around the city streets have been ridden more than 200,000 times since they launched in mid-October. We're falling in love with limes. That's what figures released this week would suggest. The 400 share scheme e-scooters scattered around the city streets have been ridden more than 200,000 times. And due to demand in Christchurch, the number of lime scooters could increase to 1,500. Usage figures were released to the City Council's Infrastructure, Transport and Environment Committee on Tuesday. 60,000 users have ridden the e-scooters in the two months since they launched on October 15. So, why are we crushing hard on this new mode of transport? That's what we asked Via Strata Senior Traffic Engineer and Transport Planner, Glenn Corey. I guess initially there's always that novelty factor and so people are actually just wanting to try them out and see what they like but uh, clearly a lot of people have found that they are a handy way to um, sort of make a few of those shorter journeys that perhaps they might have otherwise walked but it was a long way to go or maybe hopped in their car or yeah just you know filling the filling the gaps really. But is the Lime Scooter just another flash in the pan? I think it's more than a flash in a pan. I think people are seeing it as a way to do those shorter trips and um, particularly where perhaps they're a bit worried about doing things like biking. Um, this seems a, a bit friendlier for a lot of people. Uh, they don't have to necessarily be on the road, for example. Um, but yeah, it's going to have some interesting uh, spin-offs, I think, that we, we can't anticipate all the, the patterns. Limes have been ridden more than 500,000 times in Christchurch and Auckland combined, with a median distance travelled of one kilometre, while the median trip time is nine minutes. Yes, these limes are certainly getting around. Figures show that some of the tidier units around town are being ridden eight to nine times a day. And while it can be fun playing the field, some e-scooter users may be looking for a more exclusive relationship. People might find uh, that it's a bit of try before they buy uh, and it's, uh, it's been the same with other things as well in terms of electric cars, 
um, or bike share as well, that often it's been a case of they can, you know, for very low cost, uh, try these things out and if they really like it, think, actually, I want one of these myself. Um, and I think particularly if we're trying to get uh, equity as well, you know, the, the lower income people often may struggle to actually be able to afford some of these fancy gadgets, um, but if they still have access via these share schemes, then that's got to be a good thing as well. With road congestion becoming a growing beast in Christchurch, Corey believes limes could play a role in reducing congestion, particularly around connecting the dots with public transport. It continues to be a problem because our population keeps growing, both within the city and, and outside as well. And um, yeah, we don't have the room to just keep putting more and more cars on those streets. So we have to find ways uh, to add to some of those trips. For example, connecting up to a bus. Uh, and it may have been a long walk to the bus or to and from the bus, uh, and now that last mile or that first mile can be on a scooter. Another question that begs is where the e-scooters belong. They can be ridden on footpaths, but while it may seem logical to use the growing amount of cycle lanes around town, the New Zealand Transport Agency's rules currently says e-scooters can only be ridden on footpaths or the road. It, it seems like a natural middle space for them to be, um, but it, it's really just a case of the rules catching up with usage and so I, I think a lot of people have no problem with them being there. It's just unfortunately the technicality of the rules doesn't allow it at the moment. But I know that the uh, transport agency is definitely looking at that. Yes, there's plenty to look at as our love affair with the lime looks set to increase over summer. Gordon Findlater, CTV News. After the break on the south today, we witness death-defying stunts at a Queenstown aerial show and we continue our look back at the year in news. What a wonderful year! No more neck pain, shoulders are great, back, all pain's gone. Sciatica, not a problem. What a great year my customers had. Happy New Year and see you in 2019. Want a bike to work but the wind and hills have gotten you down? Come in and see our team at Electrify 249 Cumberland Street. Tell us you saw this ad and we'll throw in a bell helmet and an Oxford lock for free. Sorted. Hello, it's Jeremy down here at Mighty 10 Mega in Anderson's Bay. We've got 35 different lawn mowers down in our power garden department. We've got ride on mowers, petrol mowers, battery operated mowers, push mowers, do you know we've even got a robot, a little robot lawn mower that pops out during the day when you're at work or play, it'll pop out and mow your lawn. So come down and see me, Jeremy, down in the Power Garden Department at Mighty 10 Mega in Anderson's Bay Road where we'll help you get it done right first time. Every Kiwi deserves a reliable garage door. Rely on Garador to protect your important stuff. Just like Darren. His Garador keeps his favourite ride in mint condition. We have a huge range at affordable prices. Visit our website for a free consultation. We stand behind every door. Step into Ross Cafe, located at Ross Home in North East Valley. We have a great range of hot and cold food, friendly service and a warm atmosphere that you are sure to enjoy. We look forward to serving you soon at Ross Cafe. I just like it. I, I, it's something that it, you can see the fruits of your own labour. You put it right now, um, you don't have as much to do at Christmas. You come see me, Derek, in the garden department and then we get it done right. Firstly, happy Christmas to everybody. I just want you to spare a thought for those in our community who are in need uh, and uh, at this time of year and maybe keep an eye out for somebody that you can help over the Christmas period. My office is going to close from the 21st, Friday the 21st of December. It'll reopen on Monday the 14th of January. And in the meantime, please, all of you, have a great Christmas. Have a great time with your family and friends and take some time out. My elves and I just love coming to Alex Campbell's. That's my favourite shop. I always get good value here and good boys really deserve good brands and good quality. And look at these teas. Local beaches on some of them too. It's only for the good boys, the old boys, the young boys. What about some bright shorts for the boys? Excellent. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. 
Step into Op Shop on St Andrew and discover a place with plenty of bargains for yourself, your friends and the whole family. We have new items arriving every day. Visit us for a fabulous range of economy and upmarket clothing, accessories, books, shoes and more. Shop with us and support your community. Welcome back. The Greatest Showman came to Queenstown on Saturday night as students from Gravity Studio held their end of year show. Dubbed The Greatest Showcase and themed around the hit film, the show saw 15 students wowing the crowd with hoop and silks performances. Students performed to songs from the musical as well as hits from artists such as Pink and Fleetwood Mac. Gravity co-owner Sarah Jane Harford says the theme has been popular. She says people love the movie, they love the music, and it's good fun. In the lead up to Christmas, we're taking a look back at our news stories from over the last 12 months. In August, a leopard seal made himself at home in Oamaru, and the southern seal returned victorious from Palmerston North. Tyree College trio Bark Like a Dog are off to Auckland to compete in the National Smoke Free Rock Quest Finals. We've been doing it since year seven and uh, it's always been the thing that like wow there's the big national final and it was always like the bands in the national final were like the bands you thought were going to actually do something like well in you know the music industry. While the band failed to get top place in the competition, band member Alex Cochran received an award for his musicianship. Public in Omaru were being advised to give a seaside visitor plenty of space. A leopard seal was taking a well-earned rest at the Normanby Wharf. While they're a rare sight along our shores, this one wasn't the only leopard seal along the coast. Between Kaka Point and just north of Canterbury, we've got at least five different individuals. Wow. And that's just within the last week. And there are individuals in the North Island. And also we've got to keep in mind those are the ones we know of. Those are the ones that we have photos of. 67 drivers from across the country took part in this year's Catlins Coast Rally. Drivers said they always find the Catlins course to be challenging. It's and wide and flowing and oh, cresting and, and, and a bit of tricky stuff, you know, got to respect it sort of thing. We, we've got two battles on here, we've got us versus the road <laughs> and if we, can, if we can get that one going good we'll be alright. The victorious Southern Steel netball team were given a hero's welcome in Invercargill on their triumphant return from Palmerston North, where they'd won the ANZ Premiership Cup. Oh, no better feeling in the world, like the girls just brought it home, and just an extreme um, experience, and just so proud to lead the girls to that. A pair of white baiters in Balclutha were just some of the many who had success in this year's white baiting season, but they said they weren't just there to catch the wriggling delicacies on their way upstream. I think the white bait is just a bonus. Uh, it's just like a crib, but you just have a tire in mouth and stuff like that, but we got one down the river, so... I like but, the company with all meeting new people yeah. and white baiting, it doesn't really worry me, it's just the joy of being down here. Very Hungry Thieves stole tens of thousands of dollars worth of meat, seafood and other items from two locked freezers outside Fleur's restaurant in Moraki. All my beautiful sausages made from my pit iron cheek and... Um, salamis, you name it, they've taken it. Everything that's sort of like you're a squirrel and you've got it all stored up to use when you need it, gone. Otago businessman Murray Valentine found himself in the firing line from protesters objecting to his plans to transform Mackenzie tussock land into a dairy farm. So we're signifying that the Octagon's no place for cows, neither is the Mackenzie, and we're going to come towards Murray Valentine's office we're going to walk in his office and we're going to present him with our letter saying we do not want, please time, move on with the times and we don't want um, your industrial farming in the McKinsey country. But the office was closed. They've locked the door and they've all disappeared. In a statement, Valentine conceded his irrigation plan is a large scale scheme by anyone's standards, but he'll be under a strict monitoring regime. 
And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Residents forced to evacuate their Dunedin homes on Thursday still don't know if or when they will be allowed to return to their properties. A young Dunedin couple have spent the past two years transforming an eye-catching empty building into a brewery at Blueskin Bay. And the Harris Mountains are set to be made more accessible to outdoor enthusiasts thanks to a proposed new ski touring route. And time now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome, Barry. Good afternoon. Hi. Um, an international theatre consultancy has been hired to undertake a $300,000 study into Dunedin's performing arts scene following, of course, the closure of the Fortune Theatre. Um, so that's going to be underway earlier in the, early in the new year. Uh, a warning of grass fire risk uh, this time of the year is always um, susceptible to that and of course recent wet and warm weather uh, has uh, led to a boon in grass growth so right. beware of that. Mm. Uh, and how do Otago residents view the tourism uh, industry? Uh, so we have the results of a survey of that, which is quite revealing in that uh, how locals view uh, tourists and, and, the, uh, and the, the effects and the bonuses of that. So uh, we have the results of that. Brighton Couple, who earlier, um, earlier this month uh, lost, um, lost a lot of plants from, from the house, a, a theft. Uh, they've had their faith in humanity restored because they have been returned. Oh, great. Isn't that good news? Yeah. So, and uh, if you're looking for some inspiration for winter, winter, uh, uh, winter Christmas, uh, we have on our travel pages uh, 10 of the best places, destinations you could go to see a spectacular winter Christmas. Maybe not this year, but Maybe you can certainly year. put it on your bucket list. <laughs> yeah, on the Christmas wish list. Yeah, Christmas wish list. <laughs> well, there thank you, you very okay. All of that and more in tomorrow's ODT. And time now for a look at tomorrow's weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Molmap. Tonight's southern view is of the New Zealand flag flying in today's strong winds. Looking at the situation, a trough of low pressure will bring a cooler southerly change to southern districts tomorrow with rain for much of the day, which should clear on Wednesday, but it's going to be cold. Starting off at the northwest of the South Island, Greymouth and Westport can expect a wet day and a high of 22 degrees. Across to the northeast, Nelson, you have a few clouds and 26 degrees, while Blenheim it could also be a bit cloudy and a hot 27 degrees for you. In Canterbury, a cloudy day for Kaikoura with a high of 23 degrees. Christchurch and Ashburton may have a few clouds and highs of 23 degrees. Looking at the southern centres, expect increasing southerlies, rain and a high of 15 degrees for the Catlins, Balclutha, Lumsden and Gore. Heading westwards to central, we have similar weather for you. Variable winds, rain and highs between 14 and 17 degrees. Looking at the northern towns, along the coast, Timaru and Awamaru are in for moderate northerlies, late rain and highs of 21 to 23 degrees. Further inland, Amarama and Twizel, you're due to have variable winds, rain and highs of 17 degrees. In Dunedin, warm tonight with northwesterly winds and a high cloud, an overnight low of 18. Cloudy tomorrow with some light rain at times during the day and moderate mild northerly winds, but more persistent rain and gusty colder southerly winds developing late afternoon. A high of 21 and a low of 10 degrees. And in Vicargo, rain developing tonight with gusty northwesterlies and overnight low of 14. Cloudy tomorrow with periods of rain becoming colder with southerly winds freshening during the afternoon then easing with a high of 15 and a low of 9. Showers clearing and a few sunny periods developing on Wednesday. That's all for our news this Monday. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz, channel39.co.nz and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Ka kite anō.
This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.